All right, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I'm really excited to share with you today how you can go from being stressed and lonely to being an inspired business owner. It's a busy season. October is historically stressful for everyone, um, whether you're a creative entrepreneur or a wedding professional or a maker um, or anything like that, or in retail, it is a busy time and we can feel the stress and overwhelm pop up in a lot of ways, but I'm going to talk to you about how to go from feeling stressed and lonely to being inspired, achieving your dreams every single day and feeling like you are doing exactly what you should be doing. So as we're going through, I would love for you to tag me on Instagram. Um, you can take a picture during the masterclass. You can post it on your Instagram stories and let me know your number one takeaway. I really, really do um, love connecting in DMs. I am all about building community and connecting with people and really just want you to know that you're not alone. Business can be hard. It can be isolating. And I just want to make sure that you know that you are not alone. So you can tag me on Instagram, pop into my DMs if you have any questions at all. Um, I would love to hear from you. So feel free to take a picture. If there's a takeaway, you're like, yeah, that sounds great. I really resonate with that. Or I'm really getting that. Then you can um, post it during the masterclass onto your Instagram stories and let me know your number one takeaway. I can reshare it. It also gives me like feedback of knowing, yeah, that was good. They liked it. <laughs> so you can tag me on Instagram and send me a message. I want to just kind of set the stage before we go any further and just let you know that you are in the right place if you get lonely working on your business all by yourself. A lot of people, they work um, in their homes alone. Maybe they have their spouse works out of the house and they work at home alone. Maybe the only people with you are just your kids. I did a poll recently on my Instagram and I asked people, I said, hey, do you work with other people or do you work mostly alone? And by alone, I mean, not with other adults. And 100% of the people who responded to my poll said that I, they work mostly alone. So if you get lonely, you're not alone. I'm right. I'm right there with you. I do too. Also, you are in the right place. If you get overwhelmed by all of your goals and your to-do list and your to-do list regularly has things on at the left on it at the end of the day, you're not alone and you are in the right place. If you feel like you aren't quite reaching your full potential, but you don't know exactly how to get there, like if you feel like oh, I have all these dreams, I feel like I could be doing more. I feel like my ideas are good, but I'm not quite sure how to make this legit and how to get to where I want to be. You are in the right place. I'm so glad that you're still here. If you are still here, if you resonated with those, thank you so much for being here. We are going to talk about all these things and help get you some confidence, some clarity and com self-compassion for yourself, because I want you to know that you are not alone. And if you could, I would love if you would stay till the end for a special bonus. Um, I'm going to be talking about a bonus at the end of this masterclass. Um, if you were able to stay till the end. And as we're going, if you resonate with any of this stuff, I would love to hear you um, type in the chat. I would love to hear you say, yes, I'm tracking with that. Or can you please clarify or whatever? I, I really, really appreciate that feedback. Okay. So I want to tell you a story. Okay. Stephanie says, yes, I totally resonate with all of that. Thank you. So I want to tell you a story. I Spent most of my life in Greenville, South Carolina. I was born and raised in Greenville. Spent my whole life here, except for a few years at the very early part of my life where I lived in Louisiana for a little bit. But I spent most of my time in, in South Carolina. And in 2018, the end of 2018, my husband got offered a job in California. And he was like, hey, do you want to move to California? I said, yes. So we moved. We left everyone. We left our friends, our family. We have a big, 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 big family. We left them, our communities that we were a part of. I have childhood friends that I'm still friends with to this day. And I moved away from them. I've lived close to them my entire life. And it was, it was new. It was new. We moved to a brand new place. And I wanted to start a business that could move. I knew that we probably weren't going to be in California for too long. I, I didn't want to get into weddings because those take a long time to, it takes a long time to build up a wedding business. So what I did was I started a photo editing business. It was a skill that I already had a skill that I, <clears throat> that I knew that I could do well for people. So I started a business. Well, 
I didn't believe that I was going to get a lot of clients. And so I didn't set any boundaries for myself or really set any intentions for the business. And what happened was um, I launched the business in April. And by the time October rolled around, I had 16 clients that I was editing for in 2019. That is 16 photographers who were sending me most of their work. And if you know anything about the photography industry, you know that October is when everything is nuts. And if you're in retail, like Amanda, you also know that is when everything is nuts. For some reason, everyone, everyone sends you all this stuff and they're buying their Christmas presents for, for photographers. They're doing all their sessions. So I was stuck to my computer. I'm not kidding. There were days when I was working 15 hours a day, I would wake up and I would feel a pit in my stomach. Like, oh, I have to do this work and I have to deliver this to people and they're counting on me and I couldn't get out of it because, you know, I brought it on myself and I was committed to these clients. I didn't set any boundaries and, but I was committed to them. I wasn't going to leave them high and dry during busy season. I definitely wasn't going to do that. And so I, I was stuck to my computer. The only like, like joy that I had during my day, this sounds really depressing, but I would walk to Starbucks and get a pumpkin cream cold brew halfway through my day to reward myself for setting my goals. Like that's it. I was literally stuck to my computer. Not only that, I was lonely because like I said, it was a brand new place. I just left my community. I was lonely. I was overwhelmed and I was homesick. That was me in 2019. Can you relate to any of these feelings? Have you ever felt overwhelmed? Have you felt stressed out. I felt like I couldn't achieve my dreams. I felt like I had more that I wanted to do, but I was stuck editing all these sessions for people I, that I, that I just had to get done. I had to crank them out. Well, in 2020, something happened in 2020 that year, something changed later that year. I launched my podcast. I began developing my courses. I started volunteering with the rising tide society. And I was so excited about what I was doing. Legitimately. 2020 was the first time that I felt like I was actually making progress on my dreams, that I was getting closer and closer to where I wanted to be every single day. You can actually list, like, listen to this happen. You'll hear my podcast. And in one of the episodes, I literally said, I feel like I, I'm finally fulfilling my calling. I think I found my calling. I want to be a content creator or whatever, an educator. And I feel so alive. I legitimately said that on the podcast. So how did I go from being 2019 Christy, who was stressed and overwhelmed and lonely and homesick to being 2020 Christy, who finally, who for the first time in her life felt like she was doing what she was actually supposed to be doing. Well, I'm going to tell you, first of all, the power of friendship is huge. I went to, we visited our family in at Thanksgiving of 2020, uh, Thanksgiving of 2019, actually. It was right smack dab in the middle of a busy season. <clears throat> and we came home and I remember having this experience. I was sitting around the table at um, my sister-in-law's house. It was Thanksgiving. And I started crying in front of all my sisters-in-law and brothers-in-law. I, I have a big family. I started crying. I said, I don't want to go back. I didn't want to go back to California. That's how lonely and homesick I was. I didn't want to go back. Well, what happened was we went to California. We went back. We had to go back. My husband was working there. <laughs> we couldn't just come back. We had leases and things. And what happened was I met a friend. I met one friend that month, November, we came back. It was, it was like this, the week after we, we came back from that, from the trip back home, visiting for Thanksgiving, I met her and I was sharing with her. I was pouring out, you know, what was on my heart, what was burdened. And she looked me square in the eye and she said, I get it. I feel you. She said, you don't have to carry this burden alone. Like she legitimately said that to me. She said, you're carrying all of this alone and you don't have to. And she said, let me take some of that burden for you. Just the power of one friend changed so much for me. You know, when you meet people and you, um, you meet up with them and maybe you start to reveal a little bit about yourself and they, they look over with like glazed eyes. They're like, uh -huh, okay. Like they don't want you to, to tell you about themselves to, to tell about like to reveal personal information or they don't click with you. They're like, Oh, that's weird. We're not going there. And you know, like, Oh, okay. This person is not someone who's like, 
who is going to click with me or resonate with me. And, and, you know, but then there are other people, you meet them and you immediately click with them right away. And you realize, oh, I could say anything to them and they would still love me. That's how it felt with this friend, this one friend, seriously, the next week, I just felt like a huge burden was lifted. I felt like I could, for some reason, I feel like I could make it through busy season that I could do it because of that friend. Not only that, I got connected with a great business coach and she helped me to unlock some self-limiting beliefs that I was having. I wasn't believing part of the reason that I got so overwhelmed is because I didn't believe that I was going to be successful, that people were going to work with me. So that's why it kind of exploded. And I, I had all this work that I wasn't prepared for. She helped me to realize that I wasn't believing that I could be an educator, that I didn't think that that was for me, that other people could do that, but I couldn't do that. And so she helped me work really, really work on my mindset. And then I also found a supportive community for me. The community that I got involved with was the rising tide society. It's a free community. I love it, but I, I could go to them and say, I'm drowning in work. And they would say, Oh my goodness, we are too. We get it. You're okay. You're doing okay. There are other communities you can go and you can say I'm drowning. And they're like, okay. And they just kind of walk away. Like, I don't want to deal with you. You're too much. Or like, we're not talking about that here. So what changed for me was a, a friend, a coach, a community. <clears throat> so I want to hear from you put in the chat. Where are you right now? How are you feeling? Do you feel like 2019 Christy? Or do you feel like 2020 Christy? There's no wrong answers. If you're like, yes, I'm achieving my dreams. I I'm exactly where I want to be. I feel I feel like I'm alive and fulfilling my calling, then that's great. If you feel like 2019, Chris, you're overwhelmed, you're lonely, you're stressed, then that's okay. Maybe you're a mix of the, of the two. That's okay. I want to hear from you. <clears throat> and I want you to know, I am here for you. I cannot tell you how much having that friend, that supportive friend changed my life. It was so incredible, just the power of one friend. So I want you to know that I am here for you. Okay. So people are saying mix of both. Yes, I get it. Mix of both. That's kind of, that's kind of same for me too. Honestly, it's a mix of both. And I'm going to talk to you about that as well. I'm here for you. If you're feeling these feelings of overwhelm, of self-doubt, of imposter syndrome, of comparison, you are not alone. You can message me at Christy Johnson creative.com or at Christy Johnson creative on Instagram. And I would love to hear from you. I'm here for you. You are not alone. You don't have to do this alone. So I want to talk to you about exactly how I went from 2019 Christy to 2020 Christy. Oh, Stephanie says super overwhelmed in this season because of all the opportunities. It makes me feel like I'm not doing any one thing very well. I feel that. Oh my word. I feel that so much. And we're actually going to talk about exactly that. Thank you for sharing Stephanie. So I want to talk to you about the freedom to flourish method. This is the method that I came up with to um, take you from lonely and stressed to inspired business owners. So I really figured out why was I feeling so stressed and lonely in 2019 and how did I go to feeling inspired in 2020? So this is my three-step method to take you from lonely and stressed to inspired business owner. And I've named it this way intentionally because freedom is a really powerful word. Freedom means the power or right to act, speak, or think as one wants without hindrance or restraint. I struggle a lot with self-doubt and not knowing exactly what I want to do, where I want to go, who I want to be. And I think it's because we're inundated with, with things and people and media telling us what we need to do. We have people saying, you need to do reels. You need to blog more. You need to dress this way. You need to act this way. You need to run your business this way. Instead of saying, well, what do you want to do? We have all of these pressures and these standards put on us telling us that we have to do it this way but freedom involves the ability to do it how you want without hindrance without you without restraint what you want and flourish means to grow or develop in a healthy or vigorous way especially as the result of a particularly favorable environment the environment that i was in in 2019 it was not favorable i was alone i was stressed i was working 15 hour days it was not good. And so flourish, we're growing, developing healthy and vigorously. And so I've chosen these words intentionally, and I'm going to talk to you about the freedom to flourish method. And this is not going to be one of those masterclasses where they give you something, they don't actually teach you anything. And then they just give you a sales pitch at the end. 
yes, there is going to be a sales pitch at the end, but I'm actually going to be teaching on the, on the course because your time is valuable. And I respect your time. Time is one of, is our greatest asset. It's, it's a non-renewable resource. So I really appreciate that you've taken time to show up today and be here. So I'm going to teach, um, there will be a sales pitch at the end, but I'm, I'm going to make sure that this is worth your time. You see, I was making three big mistakes that left me feeling tired, empty, and stressed out. We're going to talk about each of those three mistakes. And I want to hear as I go through these mistakes in the chat, pop in and let me know if you have felt this before. Mistake number one, I was cramming as much as possible into my schedule because that's what successful people do. I thought that if you want to be successful, you have to put in all the things in your schedule, you got to do, 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 go, go, go. That's what I thought it meant to be successful. So let me ask you a question. How do you feel right now? Do you feel stressed? Do you feel overwhelmed? Do you feel excited? Maybe you feel both. It's busy season. Maybe you're not sure how you feel. Are you putting too much on your plate? Are you, does your schedule feel full? Do you feel like you're going here, there, and everywhere doing this, that, and the other? Do you feel like you have, I got to think about reels. I got to think about blogs. I got to think about TikTok. I got to think about email marketing. I have to think about paid ads, all these things that we think about running a business. It's, it can be overwhelming. You see, we feel like we have to be the best at everything. Our culture has, has told us, you need to do this. You need to look this way. You need to act this way. And we feel like as business owners, we have to be the best at social media marketing. We have to be the best at this. We have to be the best. We have to have the best website. We have to have the best copy. We have to beat out our competition. We got to have the best prices. They want the best service and the best prices, which makes no sense because it's like, um, <laughs> you'll get really cheap service and maybe not good, really, really cheap prices and maybe not good service. It's like that everyone wants the best of both worlds. They're like, I want a really, really great product, but I really don't want to pay for it. <laughs> so we feel like we have to be the best at everything. And the reason we feel this way is because we are inundated with things. Everyone needs us. Your kids need you. Your friends need you. Your spouse, your partner, your um, boss. Everyone needs you, your friends, your colleagues. And not only that, you see everything. I feel like everyone must be launching something right now because I'm getting emails. They're like, you need to sign up for this program. The doors are closing. Here's what you need to do. There's sales happening. Like we're get, It's information overload. Well, let me ask you a question. We're going to take a break from that overload. And I'm going to ask you a question. I've got two examples of people here. And I want to ask you which person is successful. So let's say that both of these ladies, they have the same goal of painting paintings. They're artists. And their goal is they want to paint as much as possible. They're both artists. So the person on the left, she has set up her Etsy shop. She spent a bunch of money on ads. She hired a rep designer. She's automated her sales. She's perfected her email signature. She's got everything going on. She's done all the tools, all the things, everything. She's got it figured out, but she's painted one painting. The person on the right, she spent less money on ads, but she had a strategy. She didn't hire a web designer. She DIY'd her website. She hasn't really automated that much in her business. She hasn't really done much else, but she's painted 30 paintings. Which person is successful? Obviously, the person on the right is successful because she's the one that has achieved her goal. And let me ask you another question. Which person is successful? A person on the left, she homeschools her four kids. She has a garden at her house that she works on. Maybe not all the time, but she works on it a little bit. She volunteers at her church. She's caring for her aging parents. She really likes to help out her neighbors whenever she can. And she loves to cook, but she's making $0 a year. The person on the right, she doesn't have kids. She owns a successful company. She's speaking at conferences. She's inspiring other businesswomen. She was just interviewed by People Magazine. I mean, that's crazy. And she spends her free time reading. She's like smart. She's doing all the things. She's spending her free time reading. She makes $400,000 a year. Which person is successful? They both are. They're both successful because success doesn't look, any, doesn't look one way for every single person. Success looks different for each person person. And we feel like we have to be the best at everything. We see everything. We hear about everything. I know which of my business friends are launching a new website. I know which ones are doing a new product. I know which of my neighbors are adding on to their house. And I know which of my friends have just spent an amazing time vacationing with their family and in, in, in Arizona. And they saw the grand Canyon. It was so bonding and it was so great. And you're like, I just, I, 
I can't like, I need to bond with my family. We're like yelling at each other all the time. And so you think, oh my goodness, they had this experience. I didn't, we feel shame and embarrassment and, and bad about ourselves because we see everything. But the truth is instead of being the needing to be the best at everything, what if you were just meant to be the best at being yourself? You see, we believe that success is getting stuff done, but that's not true. Success is not getting stuff done. Success is, is just achieving your goals. You know, I spent a lot of time writing content about goal setting. It's one of the things that I, that I talk about a lot. And I was creating a, a ebook about how to crush your goals. And I, one of the exercises that we go through at the beginning of the ebook is how to figure out what success means to you. And I spent a lot of time, like there's questions and everything. And we get really down deep into the heart of what you want. And I was talking with my husband one day and he's a a computer programmer. He, he is very smart. He's very analytical. And he kind of just like gets right to the point when you ask him a question, like he doesn't, he doesn't go through the fluff. And I said, Hey, what do you think success means? Like, how do you figure out what, like, how do you know if you're successful? And he just said, well, if you, if you achieve your goals, if you accomplish your goals, you're successful. And it was like, it was so matter of fact, it was like, duh, if you accomplish your goals, you're successful. That's true. If you accomplish your goals, it's you're successful. But the problem is we're stressed out because we feel like we're failing because we're not making it easy to achieve our goals. We're seeing everything. We have, we think we have to take on everyone else's goals for ourselves. We compare ourselves to others. We, we, doubt ourselves. We think that we're not good enough. So we don't make it easy to achieve our goals. You see, when you choose what's important, you can ignore what's not. When you choose for yourself, what your goals are going to be. And when you choose, I'm going to focus on this, then you can ignore what is not important. So if you choose, this is the goal that I'm going to work on. This is what's going to make me successful is this goal by accomplishing this goal, that's success for me, you can ignore everything else. But we don't know how to choose what's important because like I said, we're inundated with things oh, all the time, all the time. I'm giving you a permission slip right here, right now. You don't have to push yourself all the time. In fact, you shouldn't. You don't have to push yourself all the time. Success is not the same thing as getting stuff done. So if you are striving towards some standard that you have put towards yourself that is not authentic to you or doesn't feel good, don't do that, please. You don't have to push yourself all the time. So what we need, here's what we need to get clarity on our goals. You need to get clear on your why. Why are you in business? Why are you doing this? Why do you do what you do? Whatever it is, get really, really clear on that. And only you can figure that out. I can't determine that for you because you are you and I'm me. I can't figure that out for you. But I can help you with some questions. (laughs) Get clear on your why and then set actionable goals to help you get there and focus on one thing at a time. If you're multi-passionate like me, maybe you can focus on a couple things at a time. It's okay. But what I'm saying is instead of saying, okay, I have to do blogging, email marketing, TikTok, reels, all this stuff. And I have to be the very best at all of these things. Get clear on your why and set goals. That the ones that are going to help you get there the fastest and focus on one thing at a time. The result of this is going to be creating instead of comparing. Instead of when you see someone posting their four reels a day and you're like, oh my God, you're not going to be like, oh my gosh, I can't do that. You're going to be like, oh, good for them. Woohoo. And you're just going to be at work, getting to work, creating what it is that you want to create, doing what it is that you want to do, making whatever it is that you want to make and what you want to put out into the world. If you want to to put music out into the world. You're not going to, if you know what your goal is and you know what you're going to want that, what you want to do, you're going to work on getting there. You're going to create it instead of comparing yourself to other people. And this is going to lead to satisfaction in what you've accomplished instead of shame or guilt, because you haven't done what other people have done because their goal is not your goal. So when you have clarity on your goal, you're going to feel satisfied that you achieved it. So this is step one in the freedom to flourish method. It is clarifying your goals. 
If we don't get clear on our goals, here's what happens. You'll keep comparing yourself to others. You'll keep saying yes, even the ex at the expense of your mental health. You'll work on tasks that may not be the most effective and you'll be stressed about things that you aren't doing because you haven't decided I'm going to work on this so I can ignore this. You're going to be stressed. Oh, I'm not doing that. I'm stressed about that. No, if you get clear on your goals, you're going to know, oh, I'm doing this and, and, and it's okay. I'll, I'll do that later. If you do get clarity on your goals, you can celebrate the success of others. You don't have to compare yourself to them. You can celebrate them. You can also set healthy boundaries for yourself and you can focus on what's important and ignore what's not. Remember, when you choose what's important, you can ignore what's not. Clarity is king. This will give you the purpose and the settled feeling that you've been longing for. You don't have to strive anymore because you're clear on what you want to do. Here's some action steps for you. Feel free to screenshot this or take a picture. Action steps to get clear on what you want to do. Figure out, ask yourself, what is actually most important in your life? What is actually most important? Important. What is going to move your business forward? What's going to... Whatever that looks like for you, if you want to open up a new shop or if you want to launch a new program, what is actually going to get you there? I had to do this recently. I, I realized I was spending so much time on posting things to Instagram and social media that I wasn't actually creating courses. Like keeping up with the tasks of my business was preventing me from doing things like this right now, which is hosting this masterclass. So what will actually move your business forward? Where can you simplify and what can you ignore for right now? That's what you can do to figure out clarity on your goals. The second mistake that I was making in 2019 is that I was believing that what I had to offer wasn't valuable. I didn't believe that clients were going to want to work with me. And so I didn't set any boundaries. Not only that, I didn't believe that I could have a successful education business because I didn't believe that anyone would want to hear from me. Here's a picture of my beautiful sister-in-law, Stephanie. And it's to remind me about a story. Um, Stephanie's my business partner. We co-own Stephanie and Christy Photography. This reminds me about a story where I was sitting on my laptop editing pictures in a coffee shop. And I was um, there on my computer editing and a person came in and he came to me and he said, oh, are you a professional photographer? He saw that I was editing, editing pictures. And immediately those feelings of self-doubt and imposter syndrome started coming up. And here's what I said to him. I said, oh, uh, well, you know, I, it's sort of a hobby, but I, I guess I get paid for it a little bit. Um, yeah. <laughs> so what happened? Well, that, that was it. The conversation ended. And he like gave me some advice or something about, about photography. But the truth is I was a professional photographer. I was getting paid to take pictures. That is the definition of professional, right? You're getting paid professional. You get paid amateur. You don't, I was getting paid to take pictures. So I was a professional photographer. The problem is in my mind, I was thinking, well, I'm not as good as so-and-so I'm not as good as, as this person over here. So I'm not really professional, but I was a professional. So what would have happened if I had said that, that, that conversation could have gone entirely differently. If he had walked in and said, oh, are you a professional photographer? I could have said, yes, I am. Here's my card. This is what we do. And had a conversation from a place of confidence instead of self-doubt and insecurity, I could have, I could have been confident and maybe it would have resulted in a new business transaction. Maybe he would have hired me. Or if not, maybe he would have said when his friend said, Oh, I'm looking for a photographer. He would have said, Hey, I met a photographer the other day and here's her card. She gave me her card. You know, the possibilities are, are like endless. If you just have confidence in yourself, I want to tell you another story. This is a true story and it legitimately happened. This is a very true story. I was writing to my email list and I was talking about the idea of mindset and believing in yourself. And here's what I wrote to them. I said, you know, statistically, most of us are not going to get to walk on the moon. Most of us are not going to become professional basketball players. Most of us are not going to perform at Carnegie Hall. We were taught as kids to believe in ourselves, but somewhere along the way, we start doubting ourselves because reality kicks in and we know chances are you're not going to walk on the moon. You're not going to be a professional basketball player. You're not going to perform at Carnegie Hall. But what I said to the email list was I said, 
But what if you did? What if you did walk on the moon? What if you did become a professional basketball player? What if you did perform at Carnegie Hall? How would you show up for yourself today? What would you do if you believed that you were going to do these things? How would you show up? Well, if you wanted to be, if you want to walk on the moon, you would be like, I'm going to walk on the moon. So I'm going to study science. I'm going to figure out what it means to be an astronaut. How do I do that? You're going to train and train and train and train. You're going to do that. If you decided you wanted to be a professional basketball player and you believed that it was going to happen, you were going to study all the greats. You were going to watch videos and study what they did. You were going to go to practice. You were going to like read books on like athletics. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a sports person, so I don't know. You were going to do all the things you were going to go to practice. When your coach told you something, you were going to listen to him because you're saying he's going to tell me what I need to do to become a professional basketball player. If you wanted to perform at Carnegie hall and you actually believed that it was a reality, what are you going to do? You're going to practice. You're going to get advice. You're going to study all the great performances. You are like, if you truly believe that it's going to happen for you, you're going to make it happen. And I'm not joking. This is a true story. I wrote this in my email and that night I was at a choir rehearsal and the director was talking to us and he was giving us some announcements. We were getting ready for performance. And he said to us, he said, this summer we're performing at Carnegie Hall and you can come and you're going to be there. We're going to be at Carnegie Hall. That night I wrote to my email list. What if you believed that you were going to perform at Carnegie Hall? How would you show up that day, that night? I found out I get to perform at Carnegie Hall in June. I mean, how crazy is that? I don't know. That's crazy. <clears throat> so I'm using this story to illustrate. If you want to be the best blogger in existence or the best photographer or the best maker, the best singer, whatever it, whatever it is, <clears throat> what if you did? How would you show up? for yourself? What if you believed in yourself? How would you show up tomorrow? Gianna says, wow. Yes. Thank you. It's powerful, right? If you believed that it was going to happen and you showed up as if it was a reality, you better believe that that's going to change the way that you show up. You see your mindset matters. If you believe in yourself, you're going to show up differently than if you don't. But what happens is we see people and we say, oh, I'm not as good as them. I can't be as good as them. I can't do that. And we say, I, I could never, but that's not true. You see, my grandpa used to say, I think he got it from a president. He used to say, whether you think you can, or you can't, you're absolutely right. And it's true. Your mindset absolutely does matter. We think that the big audacious dreams aren't meant for us. But dreaming big dreams helps you show up for yourself and it helps you show up for other people too. We think that we are not meant for these things, but if you dream big, it's going to help you to be more accomplished and more fulfilled and feel like you are on fire, like you're actually fulfilling your purpose, but it's actually going to help the people around you as well, because confidence is magnetic. When you are confident about something, when you are um, showing up in a way that shows your excitement and your passion, people are attracted to that. They love that. So it's going to help others too, if you show up as well. We're overwhelmed because we don't believe we are good enough for the job. I'm just going to check in. Sarah, can you hear now? I don't know if she can. Oh, she's not in this meeting. Where did she go? Okay. I don't know if you can hear, but Sarah, I hope you can hear. We are overwhelmed because we don't believe we are good enough for the job, but this is your permission slip. You are enough. You are good enough for the job. You can do it. I believe in you. You are enough. What we need is we need to know what makes ourselves unique. Okay, Sarah says she can hear. Yes, woohoo. We need to know what makes us unique. If you don't know what makes you unique, ask your friends, ask your family, ask your past clients. Say, hey, why did you choose to work with me instead of someone else? Know what makes you unique. Believe in yourself. It sounds cheesy. Our parents teach us this as we're kids, but it's actually true. Believe that you can do it. Don't let those self-limiting thoughts in your head. And when they do, put them down, reframe them, 
and show up as if you've already made it show up as if your goal has already been achieved as if you've already opened the greatest furniture shop in South Carolina, as if you've already um, became the best photographer or wedding planner in, in the country, whatever it is, show up as if you've already made it. This is going to give you more fulfilling work. And you're also going to take, get more progress on your goals. This is step two of the freedom to flourish method. It's confidence. If you don't believe in yourself, you won't know what you truly want. You'll stay stagnant. You're not going to, progress. You're going to see other people doing things. And you're, instead of getting inspired, you're going to compare. You'll never feel good enough. And you'll never accomplish your biggest dreams if you don't believe in yourself. But if you do, you'll have clarity on your unique gifts. You'll constantly be growing and evolving and you'll practice self-compassion. There are times a lot where I don't believe in myself and I can say that's okay. And I can reach out and reach out to someone who can help me. You'll practice self-compassion if you do believe in yourself and you'll work towards your dreams every single day because you're going to have clarity. You're going to have confidence. Hello, that's what you need, right? This will give you the freedom to do more of what you love doing. That's what we all want. We want to do more of what we love, right? So here's some action steps. You can screenshot this. Embrace yourself. What is something you've always wanted to do and what holds you back from doing it? Reframe what makes you unique to accomplish this, this goal. Believe in yourself. Notice your self-limiting beliefs and practice self-compassion. A friend of mine, Rebecca Kent, she's a life coach. She was talking about how she does this. She can get into a spiral where she, where she says, being a business owner is too hard. Owning a business is too hard. But instead, she practices self-compassion. She says, sometimes I feel like owning a business is too hard and that's okay. Do you see how that changes your mindset from saying business is too hard versus sometimes it feels too hard and that's okay. That's self-compassion. And then write affirmations. You know, I grew up a good Christian girl. I didn't believe in affirmations. I thought they were woo woo, but affirmations work. If you say I am successful, I am good enough. People want what I have to offer. It works. You better believe it's going to change the way that you show up for yourself and others. And then simplify, eliminate, 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 spend time doing what you love and don't let anything get in the way of that clarity and that confidence. Okay. All right. We're, thank you guys for staying in with me. Thank you so much for staying on. We've made it to the last mistake. And this is a big one. I didn't have a community that was supporting me and I was working mostly alone. I was working in a studio apartment. My husband went to work. And I was there alone most days by myself. Recently, I was at a conference and one of the ladies said, I feel alone in my house every day. Like I said, I did a poll on my Instagram. Most people said that they, everyone who responded to my poll said that they work mostly alone. We're all human friends. We need each other. And part of being human is that we're all hurting people and we're not perfect. And we for some reason, think that that's not okay. And we feel like we have to put on masks and that we can't share our, our burdens with each other, but that is not true. We need each other. We are all human. So what about those times when you don't believe in yourself? What are those times when you're feeling alone? What do you do when you don't believe in yourself? What do you do if you don't have a community? In fact, just this week, I reached out to a couple of people and I've had to ask for help because I have had a lot of things going on in my life. I had spoke at a conference last week and the week before, two weeks ago, the week before, and then this. So I've been stressed. In fact, just last night, I told one of my friends, I said, I'm talking about how to go from stress and lonely to inspired business owner, but I'm stressed. And I don't know if I can teach on this. Like I said this last night, this is the part in like masterclass training. Like they tell you not to say this, but I'm saying it because I'm human. And I didn't believe in myself last night. So what did I do? I reached out to my community. I reached out to my, to a friend. And she told me it's okay. And she helped build me up and helped me to know that I can do this and it's going to be okay. So when you don't believe in yourself, you need a community cheering you on. And a lot of times for us, we can't go to our friends and family because they don't understand what it's like to be a business owner. And that's okay. That's totally fine. They don't have to understand that's them. They have their own journey and that's hundred percent. Okay. So I think that the success that I've had has come from other business owners 
being in my life and cheering me on. Yes, my family has helped me. My friends have helped me. But in terms of the business stuff, sometimes you got to go to someone who knows what it's like to own a business and, and, and cheer you on and support you. Did you know that 30% of Americans don't have one friend that they share their innermost thoughts with? 30% of Americans don't even have one friend that they share their innermost thoughts with. We have a loneliness epidemic in our country because we put up these walls because Instagram and social media and TikTok and all these apps, like tell us what media, tell us what we need to do, what we need to be, that we need to, we can't think certain thoughts and we can't do certain things and that we can't be real with each other, but we need to be real with each other. We need each other. I'm going to give you a couple examples of business owners. Most of us hang out in these two images on the left. Number one, she has a lot of ideas, but she's afraid that she's going to fail. So she makes excuses so, and she doesn't start her business. She says, there's not enough time to start a business. I'm not smart enough. I'm not skilled enough and people won't like it. And so she stressed out a lot about it and she feels like a failure. Maybe this person, this person on the left, she has a lot of ideas, but maybe she's not afraid to fail. She just doesn't know where to start. So she maybe gets started. She starts her business. She gets overwhelmed. And then she's like, I don't know what to do. There's no one to help me. This is too complicated. And so maybe she keeps going on in her business for a while, but maybe she quits. Maybe she's overwhelmed and stressed out. A lot of us live in that reality. But oops, <clears throat> there is another way. This third, idea, third way. Here's an individual. She has some ideas. She joins a group. She asks for help. She does research. She breaks it down. She makes a plan. And then when she's still overwhelmed, she asks for more help. And because she's taken that time to ask for help, she gets it done. And then she finds her success because she's achieving her goals. You see, there's this path that we all take where you are to your dream life. We all have a dream life in our heads. We all know what that is, what we want for ourselves. And a lot of us are stuck riding a bike. We start our business and we're on a bike. We're doing whatever we can a little bit at a time. And then maybe we learn some things and we get in a car like we've learned some tasks and now we're like, we're like full steam ahead. We're making some really big progress on our dreams, but it still feels like maybe where we want to go is like kind of unattainable because it's like 3000 miles or whatever, you know, we get stuck. Okay. Here's a video I want to play for you guys. <laughs> this is my nephew. His name is Rome. And he was in his little car and he was running right into this tree. So sometimes even in a car, you get stuck. We can't level up our, level up our businesses because we're getting stuck in the weeds. He was getting stuck. And sometimes it feels like that, that in business, you feel like I have all the tools that I need, but I'm just stuck. I can't get there. I can't get to where I want to be. And that's relatable, but what we need is a brand new vehicle. We don't need a car. We need an airplane. We need an airplane to get up and get out and get on the faster path, the fast track to our dream life. You see, we think asking for help is a sign of weakness, but asking for help is a sign of strength. If you don't know what the next step in your business is or how to get there, that's okay. Ask for help. That's a sign of strength because you've decided I want my dream life so bad that I'm willing to potentially make myself look bad in front of my friend and ask them for help. But actually you don't look bad because I bet you that they're going to say, Oh my gosh, me too. Thank you for sharing. Like it, it connects us all when we're authentic, right? We're stressed out and lonely because we're stuck in a system that constantly compares each other. That's the system. We're in a broken system. The media, social media, everywhere, everywhere we go, our friends, everywhere. Like we just feel like we constantly have to compete and we're comparing. But instead we need a culture of community and celebration so that we can lift each other up. We can celebrate each other's wins. That's what we need. So here's a permission slip for you. It's okay to take up space. It's okay to ask for help. You are not a burden, my friend. I'm going to say exactly what my friend said to me. You don't have to carry your burden alone. It's okay to take up space and to ask for help. And you can dream big and you can achieve your, dream, achieve your dreams. What we need is we need accountability for when we get stuck, 
We need support for when we're feeling low. We need, we need those people that we can reach out to. And we need to celebrate when we crush our goals. A lot of times we're doing big things in our businesses, but when we're working all by ourselves, you release a new product and no one, no one hears about it. You launch a website, no one's celebrating you. We need to celebrate each other. Celebration, it actually like rewires your brain when you celebrate and, and admire what you did and what you achieved. And you get people saying, yes, good job. We need that. And maybe your friend, your family isn't giving that to you because they don't understand what it's like to own a business. That's totally fine. It's okay. So we need a supportive community of fellow business owners, understanding what it is that we are going through and celebration when we crush our goals. The result is going to be, you're going to feel more, you're going to get more goals accomplished. You're going to feel more like yourself because you're going to be able to, um, move forward quicker. So the step three in the freedom to flourish method is community. If you don't have a community, you won't as easily course correct when you're on a path that isn't going to work. If you don't have community, you won't pick yourself up as fast. Um, when you feel low and you, and something blows up in your face and you're feeling low, if you don't have someone to pull you out of there, you're going to be stuck there for longer. And you might not realize just how amazing you are. If you don't have people telling you you're amazing, I appreciate you. I value you. Thank you for taking up space. If you do have a community that supports you, that cheers you on, that says you can belong here with all of your uniqueness, then you'll reach out when you need help. When you know that they're not going to judge you, you'll have other people cheering you, you on and you'll go to them to get ideas. You'll believe in yourself and in your ideas. And you'll know that someone always has you back. That's the airplane for me. The airplane is community. This will lead to flourishing so that you can achieve more than you thought possible. Again, like I said, flourish means to grow or develop in a healthy or vigorous way, especially as the result of a particularly favorable environment. The community is the favorable environment that you need to flourish. The community is a favorable environment. Growing vigorously, when you have other people working together alongside you, that is what's going to help you to flourish and grow even faster because you'll be learning from other people. You don't have to do it alone anymore. Natalie Frank, the founder of the Rising Tide Society, she says, we were built to belong. She has a book called Built to Belong. I highly encourage you to check it out. We were built to belong. You were built to belong. So here's some action steps to find this community in your life. Find a community. The Rising Tide Society is free. You can check it out. There are also local Facebook groups that you could go to. You can ask your friends and, and colleagues, hey, what communities are you a part of? Can I join them? You can set up meetings with people. You can ask them questions. You might get some of those blank stares that I talk about when you reveal some personal information. They're like, uh, they're not connecting. So you move on and you know that, that it's okay, that they're not for you and you're not for them. That's totally fine. Open up and reach out. If you're struggling, I'm giving you a fast track to get there that I'm going to talk to you about in just a second. Um, but I wanted, I, you've given me your time on this masterclass. So I want you to also be able to, um, get what you need. Okay. Without paying money. I said, there's going to be a sales pitch. I wanted to give you what you need. This is like, this is going against every sales tactic that I ever learned. And maybe, um, I'll regret it later, but I don't think so. I appreciate you for being here. And so this is kind of the action step to feeling inspired is clarity, confidence, and community. If you only take away one thing from this masterclass, I want you to know that you don't have to do this alone. I'm inviting you to reach out to me through my DMs on Instagram. And I'm going to talk to you about how you actually don't have to do this alone. Do you, the choice is yours. Do you want to be 2019 Christy or 20 or whatever version of yourself that you're right now? Or do you want to be 2020 Christy? 2019 Christy was stressed, lonely, overwhelmed feeling just alone and burnt out 2020 Christy felt alive. She was living her dreams. She was making progress on her dreams every single day. Literally. It was the first time in my life that I felt like I was doing what I was meant to do. And I was making progress on my dreams every single day. And it's because of the community that I was in. It's time for you to stop spinning your wheels and start experiencing freedom. So I am so excited to announce that Christie's Biz Besties is now open for membership. 
I'm very, very excited for this. It's called Christie's Biz Besties. It sounds a little bit cheesy, but it's because a best friend is someone that you go to when you're feeling low and having a business bestie is even better because they understand what you're going through. They can help you brainstorm ideas. So Christie's Biz Besties is now open for membership. I'm going to pop a link in the chat that you guys can take a look at as I'm going through the end here. We're almost done, five minutes. Christie's Biz Besties is now open for membership. And I wanna tell you about it. You have given me your time for the past 55 minutes and I really, really appreciate it. So now I'm asking for four more minutes of your time for you for me to tell you about the, the program. First, I wanna start with some testimonials. Rachel, she said about this community, she said, I love that this membership is so much more than a course. So it's not a course. There are course-like things in it, but it's a membership that creates community of fellow creatives to support and encourage one another. Christy creates amazing content for her students based on their needs for that month. It really is such an incredible opportunity to have a coach and other creatives to come alongside you. I couldn't re recommend this more highly. Jen says, if you need ideas to help your business, if you need help connecting your heart to your work, if you need to build consistency in getting work done, then this is the membership for you. And Nicole says, this community has supported me through the launch of my podcast, my online Etsy shop, and getting more into print sales in my photography business. I've loved bouncing ideas off of the other girls and getting their honest opinions before I open something up to the world. I mean, it's working. It's worked for these people. So I want to tell you exactly what's in Christie's Biz Besties. First of all, you're getting the Freedom to Flourish method that I talked about. It's a complete framework for setting goals aligned with your values. We're going to create a schedule that helps you get everything done while doing more of what you love. You're going to get support tips and tools for discovering and eliminating your roadblocks to productivity. Everything that I teach is tied to this framework of clarity, confidence, and community. And then here's where the fun part happens. There's going to be weekly masterminds and there's four weeks in a month, right? Sometimes five. So these are going to be on Mondays. If you're like, oh, I can't do Mondays, please message me if you're really interested in this. And as I go through the scheduling as a problem for you, please message me because I want to, if you're really, really interested, we can work with the community and pick, pick different times. Like it's not set in stone. Okay. So the first week of the month is going to be goal setting. This is a $49 value per month. This is a workshop where you'll brainstorm and cast your goals for the month. You'll do it with other people. You'll be able to clarify your vision, set goals according to your vision, break it down into actionable steps, and you'll get support and account accountability from the group. Week two is going to be monthly masterminds. C We're going to have um, CEO task days for week two of the masterminds. This is a $49 value per month. This is dedicated time to tackle those tasks that usually fall through the cracks, like finances, admin work, sending invoices, auditing your systems, automating tasks, et cetera. So if you're like me and your bookkeeping falls apart, usually and if you're like months and months behind, this is going to stop all that. We're going to have CEO task days where we work on it together. It's way better doing it with friends. So you're going to get help streamlining your processes. You're never going to feel like your admin tasks are piling up. You're never going to wonder if your business is actually profitable or not, because we're going to be talking about your finances. Week three is going to be a workshop. And this is going to be every month. Every, every third week of the month is going to be a new workshop. This is $199 value. You're going to learn with your peers about a different business related topic each month. So each month it's $199 value. Some of the topics that we'll talk about are streamlining and automating, email marketing, website creation, content creation, productivity. You'll always be learning and growing with the support of your peers. Week four is going to be masterminds. This is the bread and butter. This is the juice of the program. Like this is the fuel. This is where you will be able to share about exactly what's going on in your business and where you need help. You'll get support from the members on the call and brainstorm and workshop solutions right away. You'll be able to workshop your ideas with others and get closer to your goal every single day. Like masterminds, they are amazing. This is where you say, Hey, I'm working on this new project. How can I, how can I make this better? What do you think? Like, it's going to be amazing. Okay. And then some months are going to have five weeks. So the bonus week, um, it's going to be a Q and a session. This is kind of flexible. We can do tutorial walkthroughs. We can do a hot seat audit. Like we can look at your website together and do an audit. Like basically like we're just a community of business friends doing things all together, achieving our goals. It's going to be amazing. So you're going to get practical help right where you need it. And then this is also what I love. There's going to be focused work sessions every single week. Starting out, there's going to be two times a week. So you're going to get two hours of dedicated work to focus on the goals that you set. So this is where we co-work together. We get on a Zoom call and we work on the goals that we have set for ourselves, the project. So you're actually going to be able to make progress on your goals 
every single week. You're going to be able to get group support when you need help. You can be like, Hey, can you, can you tell me if this copy sounds good? Tell me if this website page looks good. Tell me if you like this thing that I'm making, you're going to, these are, this is where it's going to be in the membership. You'll get weekly focus work. And then there's going to be extra support. There's going to be a resource library. Every time I put a workshop, there's stuff in there right now, but every time I put in a new workshop, you're going to get more, you're going to get access to that as long as you're a member. So you'll get the resource library. You're also going to get a Voxer group chat. So we're going to have a group chat where we are going to be able to get support during the week. You can say, Hey, I just landed a new client. And we can say, yes, go you. If you're feeling low, you can send a voice message and say, I'm overwhelmed. I literally did this last week. I sent a voice message to my business coach where I was just like, I'm overwhelmed. I need help. So this is where you're going to get that extra support. And then the future content value is just going to pile up and up and up because every time we release a workshop, you're going to get that. You're going to get access to that. So it's just going to add up. So all in all, when you add up the freedom to flourish method, it's $66 a month. I, I broke it down into monthly, um, the Q and a sessions, the goal setting, the CEO task days, the workshops, the monthly mastermind chats, the resource library, the boxer group that adds up to a thousand and twenty six dollars total value per month. And there are memberships out there masterminds where they do charge a thousand dollars a month. It is totally worth this much. I'm telling you, but you can go right now to Christy Johnson, creative.com slash biz besties and sign up. I'm planning to have this be priced at $97 a month, but guess what? I told you, if you stayed to the end, you were going to get a bonus. This is an exclusive masterclass exclusive. This is going to be valued at $97 a month. This is my target rate. But because you are on this call right now, you can get started for $30 a month. $30 a month. You get access to all of this, a community. It's amazing. For the price of one coffee per week, you will be able to have this, an amazing, this amazing community of creative entrepreneurs learning together, giving support, and cheering each other on. Just a few more testimonials. Jerry said, despite being in Africa without my normal daily schedule, I've had one of my most productive years personally. So incredibly thankful for Christy's group. My brain functions so much better with this system. Hannah said, my mindset has changed on community and having others help brainstorm ideas. That was wonderful. And I think having ideas in the mastermind and then working on them is really helpful for anyone in the, is really helpful for any industry. And then Bethany said, Christy is a great coach and accountability partner for your business. She genuinely wants you to succeed and love what you do. That's true. I do. I genuinely do. I urge all female entrepreneurs to join. It will renew your vision, define your purpose and kickstart, kickstart your energy. And I love this one that Rachel said, just try it for a month. Write down your doubts about why you wouldn't want to join and see if they are still there by the end of the month with this membership. I like what Rachel is saying. It's only $30. What do you have to lose? You can cancel any time. So you can go there right now, my friends, christyjohnsoncreative.com slash bizbesties to sign up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I put the link in the chat, christyjohnsoncreative.com slash bizbesties. Thank you so much for joining me, for taking this time. I know we're a few minutes over one o'clock. I really appreciate you staying here and being on. Don't forget to shoot me a DM or post on Instagram stories with your number one takeaway and tag me so that I can be sure to see it. Thank you all so much. I'm going to stop this recording and then I'll hang on if anyone has any questions.